So this next piece is um, called Opening in Your Heart, and it's coming, you know, out of that um, thought vibration. Um, you know, you got to put it in to get it out. And um, one thing that is so important about this is there's so many folks here that have been really serious about a heartfelt commitment that they've put their entire life into. So if you could give a round of applause to all of these great musicians who <laughs> perform tonight. And you know, it, it's really um, something, you know, I'm like, I, I guess you know, at this stage, the stage of revelation in my life in terms of like, uh, you don't know where it's going, but if you feel something strongly, you gotta, you know, go for it. Even, you know, when nobody around you is gonna even try to figure out what you're doing. So, you know, like, you know, when I told a lot of my partners I grew up with, my parents, I said, I'm gonna become a star playing an African drum. And they're like, yeah, right. <laughs> um, you got to stay at it, you know. And, um, you know, I was saying, I was two weeks ago, you know, I'm sitting in the, in the Kennedy Center and I'm looking, you know, Archie Shep is now 81 and Farrell 77, you know, and these were the outcats, you know. The writers in the 60s called it, you know, war music or angry music, even though you could hear all that love in Farrell's horn and all that sexiness and, 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 and soulfulness and Archie Shep's, you know, horn, uh, they were never, you know, angry people in the heart of their music. And, you know, 50, 60 years of being without certain recognition and I'm sitting at the Kennedy Center and they're winning it together, you know, the masters, you know. It's, you know, then, you know, a week later, you know, like me and Threadgill, we used to live together and we were both going back and forth from New York and we kind of like fell out because I didn't pay the light bulb bill. <laughs> but I figured that I was the one out of town so he should have paid the light bulb bill. <laughs> but can you imagine the cat that I fought about the light bulb bill won the Pulitzer? I mean, we should give Henry a hell of a round of applause. <laughs> he, he won the Pulitzer. Yeah. You know, and then last thing in short, you know, it's like the um, the council general had actually called me for a couple of years, right? And they said, well, we never had anyone that didn't want to accept the knighthood. And I said, well, what do you mean? I, you just said that I was a candidate. They said, well, that meant you won. <laughs> so it was like two years it took before, you know, I could get the medal because I didn't figure out I had won, you know. So, <laughs> you know, and so they said, well, you know, you, you have to come to Paris and everything. I said, I would love to, but, you know, I got seven kids and it'd be about 11 grand, like, to fly them over there, you know. So then they were like, um, okay, well, we can come to Chicago, you know, and, and because of your seven kids and, uh, and we want to do it at the Museum of Contemporary Art. I said, oh man, it'd be a great place. I, you know, it'd be great, but I want to do it in a joint. And they were like, qu'est-ce que c'est joint? <laughs> I said, joint is a club. Like, you know, I grew up playing this music in clubs and that is my royal hall, you know? And so, and so they came and they said, man, when we did the, you know, we, we had house music, we had jazz, we had fulcrum point, we had just all kinds of folks. We know we had the bridge, musicians from, from France playing with Musician Chicago. We had friends, you know, from the streets, from banks, royalty, all kinds of people. And that was my dream, that this is a world where everybody is respected for their uniqueness and we can collectively tolerate the worst of what we got to get to the best of what we can do. So that's it.